Hello, and welcome back to my studio. Have you ever seen a line drawing or artistic design, like something in a Dover book, and thought, I'd like to use that design in my quilting, but then turning it into the pattern seemed hard. I recently had to do this myself for a project I'm working on. So today, I'm going to show you some of the most important techniques I use. demonstrate them using two computer programs, Photoshop and CorelDRAW. But instead of a full class just on using a particular program, I'm going to show you how some common features you might not have used before can be really useful for making patterns. You may also use different programs that do similar things, like PaintShop Pro instead of Photoshop, and that's okay. What's most helpful is if you have some basic familiarity with whatever software you do use. Fortunately, there are many good tutorials on programs like these. Why do I use both Photoshop and Corel? Well, there are two ways to work with images on a computer. One way is called a bitmap, and it's what you get to start with when you scan or photograph a printed drawing. But if you resize a bitmap and zoom in too far, you'll just see a bunch of square pixels, and that's not good. The other way is a vector drawing. You can resize these, and they'll still give you smooth curves, and you can even adjust the curves. It's much more useful for a pattern, because you can scale your design to the size of fabric that you want to use. Vector programs often have tools for tracing a bitmap and making it into a vector drawing. Getting good results can be tricky. But I find the two methods I'll show you today work consistently. The first is simpler for something like a whole cloth quilt. The second lets you do more, like combining thread art and applique, or giving you a good starting point for embroidery designs. First, let's start with the simplest approach. To get us started, I have Photoshop open with a scanned line drawing I got from a Dover book. There are some artifacts from the scanning to fix. You can see there is some darkening on the edges of the page. There's also some printing that bled through the paper in the middle. We don't want the computer to think these are part of the drawing. Select the scanning artifacts piece by piece, using the rectangle selection tool or the lasso, and just delete them. I'm going to zoom in on a couple of places here, and that will help me do that more accurately. But if you delete something by mistake, you can just undo it. Make sure you save the file at this point and give this version a new file name. Now I'm using Corel Draw, and I've just opened a blank letter size page. What I'm going to do is take the file we just worked on and drag and drop it into the page. Now with our drawing selected, click on the bitmap menu and select Convert to Bitmap. You'd think it'd already be a bitmap, but for some reason Corel doesn't treat it that way. The default options are fine, just click OK. Now we need to convert it to a vector drawing. If you look at the bitmap menu, you'll see Corel has a few ways to do this. But the one we want to use is under Center Line Trace. Then select Line Drawing. We want it to trace the center of each line because some of the lines in our drawing are thick and some are thin. We don't want it to trace the inside of a line in one place and the outside in another, or the ends might not meet up. Push the detail slider up between 75 and 80 so it traces accurately enough but not every little wiggle. We want smooth curves too, so push that slider up to about 50. Then click OK and let it do its work. If you go to the Object menu and click on Objects, you'll see that there are now two things listed. One is a group of objects. Those are the curves we just had it create for us. The second is a bitmap. At this point, you can select the bitmap and delete it. 
What you have left is a clean trace of our drawing. You can make the lines thinner or bolder. If you want to resize the drawing for a larger pattern on a larger page, you can do that too. This works great for a project like thread art, but suppose you want to combine applique and quilting and thread art on a single piece. I have a different approach for that. I'll show you now. We're back in Photoshop and I have a different bird design open. This time, let's start by adjusting the size of our picture so that it fits a standard page. Because this pattern will be more complicated, we need to be able to align it with a standard page and have it come out the same every time. Resize the image so that the long edge is 11 inches and the short edge is a little under 8.5 inches. Make sure you set the options so that it will not resample the image. We don't want to change the image. We just want to change how large the computer thinks it should print. Now use the canvas size function to make the canvas 8.5 by 11 inches. That will just add some white space to the sides to make it a standard letter size page. This next part is the most counterintuitive, but it's a key step. We want to get rid of all the lines. I know it's a line drawing, but for this project, I want the solid shapes that the lines surround, not the lines themselves. It's the white space left behind that we care about. The first step is to make sure we're dealing with just black and white. It looks like that already, but really there are shades of gray around the edges where the scanning tried to make the edges softer. So go to the image menu and under adjustments, select posterize and slide the setting all the way down to two levels before clicking OK. Since we want solid shapes, we need to repair any broken lines in the drawing so that the shapes the lines around are watertight, so to speak. I'm using the line tool for this. Zoom in a bit, look over the image, and find any place that the lines look broken. Don't worry about the lines that are deliberately dashed. We just want to make sure that we got solid shapes where they're supposed to. Now we want to select all the white space at once so we can leave the lines behind. We do that by going to the Select menu and then use the Color Range tool. That will bring up a control box but you'll also see that your cursor has changed to an eyedropper. Use the dropper and click on somewhere in the middle of the white space. Then click OK on the control box. You'll see from the dashed lines on your picture that Photoshop has selected everything white. That's perfect. Press Ctrl C to copy it. We need a clean place to put it. On the layer menu, click New to create a new layer. On the control box, make sure the color for the new layer says None, then click OK. Select the new layer, then press Ctrl V to paste all the copied white space in place. Now, if you uncheck the eye icon by the background layer to make the background invisible, you'll see that we just have the white space with a faint checkerboard pattern where the lines were. Go ahead and delete the background layer at this point. We don't need it. But then let's make everything easier to see. Go up to the image menu and under adjustments click hue saturation. That brings up a control box with three sliders. Slide the lightness slider all the way to the left to minus 100. Then click OK. All the white space should have turned into solid black shapes we can work with. There's just one more step to clean up. Use the magic wand tool to select the parts that really were just background and delete them. Save your file with some name that lets you know we have solid shapes. Those shapes are going to be important, so let's see what we can do with them. I've opened up CorelDRAW with a new blank page to get us started. The same letter size page as our drawing. I'll drop our solid shapes file onto the page and it should align perfectly. As before, I need to select the drawing and convert to bitmap, and then we're going to trace it. This time though, we want to use Corel's outline trace function and select the one for turning it into line art. Set the detail up pretty high, say around 80 to 85, and the smoothing about a third of the way up, around 35. Then click OK. If you make the bitmap invisible, you can see we got a good trace so you can go ahead and delete the bitmap off the page at this point. 
It's the shapes we want for our pattern. For this layer of our pattern, I want the outlines of those shapes. We can do that by changing the properties for the group of objects we just made. Change the fill color to none, and then set the lines to black with whatever line width you prefer, and you'll see we have smooth outlines for all our shapes. There's a lot you could do with a pattern at this point. You could use the design for thread art, or maybe create an embroidery design. For now though, I'm going to leave this layer and add another one for some applique shapes. I'm back to Photoshop with our image of the solid shapes open, so we can create the part of our pattern that will give you applique shapes to cut out. For this demonstration, let's say we want to applique the two birds themselves. We need to get rid of anything in the drawing that isn't part of the birds. We can select big pieces we don't need with the rectangle tool or the lasso tool and delete them in big chunks. We can also use the magic wand to select the finicky pieces near the lower bird and delete them that way. That will help us make sure we don't accidentally erase any of the bird itself. Once you have just the birds left, you need to make each bird into a single solid shape using the line tool to complete the outline of each bird and make it watertight. With that done, use the paint bucket tool to fill in all the gaps. Now, repeat the process for the other bird, closing up the outline and filling it in. Here I saved my work as a new file. I am careful not to save over the image of all the individual solid shapes. With that done, I can go back to Corel Draw and put the applique shapes in a layer of our pattern. I'm going to make the earlier layer invisible for a minute to make it easier to see what I'm doing. This is why we made sure everything is a standard letter size canvas. We can drop this new file down with the bird appliques and they'll line up perfectly with the file of all the different shapes we made earlier without any work at all. Once again, I'm going to convert to bitmap to convince Corel that our bitmap really is one. Then I use the outline trace function to turn the bitmap into line art, again with a fairly high amount of detail and a moderate amount of smoothing. Now I'm going to make everything visible so you can see how the pattern goes together. Over on the objects list, where it has a layer with the bird appliques, I'm going to select those and then change their properties to give them a different color and make them partially transparent. You can see that the applique parts line up perfectly with the lines for thread work. And if you had more applique pieces, you could easily line those up as well to assemble a full pattern and visualize how your whole design could work. There's one more thing I'm going to show you here. For this, I want to work just with the bird appliques in Corel. Let's select just those and then use the export tool under the file menu to save the bird shapes as an SVG file. Why is that important? Well, at least some of the digital fabric cutters on the market will take an SVG file and then use it to cut the shapes you give it. That would make your pattern even easier to use. I hope you found today's video useful. It's a bit different than my normal projects, but being able to make your own patterns and quilting designs is an important tool for your studio. As always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll try and answer them. Keep an eye out for my next project videos. You'll see what you can do with the kinds of patterns we worked on today. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can find them easily. In the meantime, be sure to have fun in your studio. Bye-bye!